Today marks the 25th anniversary of the Rwandan genocide. Mourners gathering for a commemorative ceremony in the capital city this morning. It was a mass slaughter that claimed hundreds of thousands of lives, most of those targeted being Tutsi people. And decades later, that country is still healing. Rwanda's president spoke at the ceremony. He said the resilience and bravery of the survivors represent Rwandan character in its purest form. Well, with that, let's bring in Natasha Fata, who is covering the story for us today. And, you know, we have to say this was a brutal war. It was a genocide. And so some of the details here are going to be disturbing for people at home, Natasha. But what do we now know about how Rwanda is marking this anniversary? Well, you saw some of the celebrations, some of the events that are taking place. It's going to be a week of commemorating uh, what was one of the most brutal genocides of the 20th century and also celebration of the survivors and what they have overcome. But really, all of this uh, will also include 100 days of national mourning and that's because it was 100 days of slaughter in Rwanda in 1994. So all of this began when on April 6, 1994, the then president of Rwanda along with the, his counterpart from Burundi got on board a plane and that plane was shot down and everyone on board was killed. Both of those two men were ethnic Hutus and so the suspicion for many Hutus was that there was another faction, the Rwanda Patriotic Front, which is a Tutsi organization. They were responsible for the killing of these two prominent men and as a result it was used as an excuse to go out and slaughter men, women and children for the next 100 days. They went from town to town, city to city, community to community, just killing and raping and pillaging. It was brutal. They wanted people to suffer. They burned down churches and homes, and they even had kill lists. They used the radio networks to make sure that everyone in other communities knew who the Tutsis were and to go after them. In 100 days, 800,000 people were killed, most of them Tutsis, but also moderate Hutus who were trying to protect their friends, their neighbors, their loved loved ones. They even had rape militias. So in some instances, they took people who had HIV and AIDS, they took them out of hospitals and deployed them to go rape Tutsi women. So not only would those women get infected, but their unborn children would then be infected upon birth. It was so vicious and it went on until July of that year when the Ugandan army supported the Rwanda Patriotic Front. They pushed out the regime. And as a result, uh, they brought in a tribunal to Tanzania where those who committed the worst crimes were held accountable. Ninety people indicted and uh, dozens of them were senior officials within uh, the government and the military of Rwanda. But when you think 90 people indicted, it's not enough when you're thinking also of almost a million people killed in 100 days. Really, really a very dark chapter. Seventy percent of the Tutsi population of Rwanda was wiped out. A dark chapter, as you say, is still disturbing to hear those facts so many years after. Uh, let's talk about the Canadian connection here, because there is a significant Canadian connection, not only in the commemorations that we are seeing today, but also in the response to the genocide. That's right. When you talk about what happened in Rwanda, most of it, from at least a Western perspective, we understand because of Romeo Dallaire. Now, this Canadian man was the head of the peacekeeping mission in Rwanda at the time. He bared witness to what was taking place, and he made the rest of the world bear witness as well when we wanted to look away. We turned away. And so he still talks about it as though it just happened. He did um, an extensive interview with our colleagues at CBC Radio 1 on the Sunday edition with Michael Enright. Here he is describing what that experience was like. And again, a warning, the details are disturbing. The most disgusting dimension, if I can even use that, is not only the, the killing, but it was the humiliating mutilation that they would do. They would they didn't realize that, hey, why why just try to kill them? And it's such a hell lot of horror work and there's so many of them anyways and so on. So let's just let them bleed and suffer to death. They would do that even with children. To watch them suffer. Yeah. And 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 so it wasn't just wanting to kill them. They wanted them to suffer. Some pretty graphic descriptions of what he witnessed. He has acknowledged that as a result of his time in Rwanda, he has post-traumatic stress disorder, has concerns around how, how he was able to process it. Imagine having lived and survived through it, having your mother or your father or your children 
lived through something like that, it would be absolutely unbelievable. A hundred days of mourning coming up and uh, we will continue to watch how things unfold today.